Okay, we all back? Ready? Ready to do microscopes? Okay. Awesome. All right, so I sent you the microscope lab, right? And so this lab is, uh, the purpose of it is to become familiar with the bio biologist's most important tool, the microscope, specifically a compound light microscope, allows us to actually have a picture of it, show you that. Here's a light microscope, uh, not too dissimilar from the uh, microscopes you'd find at Miracosta. Uh, and a biologist can use a compound light microscope to view cells, the th things that we've been talking so much about. Uh, see what they look like, see uh, how they behave. Even if it's a single celled organism, we can watch it move around and do some cool things. <clears throat> so the microscope is very important, uh, especially for those entering the nurse, nursing, medical field, whatever it is, uh, oftentimes with infection uh, to, dis, to, uh, to determine a type of bacterial infection, they'll look at it under the microscope and see what it looks like or a certain stain if it uh, appears a certain way. Uh, so they're very important. Uh, and okay, so today we're really gonna go over the fundamentals of using a microscope uh, the different components, as you can see, the anatomy of the microscope, uh, sort of my, what I learned over my years of my sort of tips and advice for when you use a microscope. Uh, and yeah, so let's begin. So, okay, first thing is, I'm actually going to share with you the, the lab I sent you. Uh, and let me do that now. Okay, so here's your lab. And of course, we have embedded videos uh, to learn about microscopes, their uses. Uh, but in particular, we are learning how to use it properly and how to view cells. Uh, and there are a couple things you have to do in order to accomplish this goal. Uh, first is called interpupillary distance adjustment. Uh, this is this is so you can use both your eyes. Um, and so there's this distance between the two of your eyes. Uh, and so you can kind of actually set the, what we call the ocular lenses, uh, to, um, be a, at this appropriate space between, between your eyes. Uh, so then you can use both your eyes to view a specimen. And this is, uh, helpful to reduce eye fatigue. Okay, and I'm not going to be too specific. I'm really I'm just going to address the main points here of microscope use uh, for this lecture, this mini lecture, um, and kind of yeah, like I said, some some tips and tricks that I've learned myself, or or really things to be very aware of. But the next thing is the, the diopter setting adjustment, and so there'll be a video on how to adjust diopter settings. Uh, this is for, it's a, to account for the difference in vision between your two eyes. Uh, and essentially by adjusting the diopter settings, you can, uh, you don't, you won't have to wear eyeglasses, which like it says, it's reflective and troublesome. Uh, so diopter settings are uh, useful. 
Um, and it, it, it allows things to be in focus for both of your eyes, even though your eyes are have different, uh, of course, vision capabilities. Okay, the next illumination adjustment. Uh, and so this uh, illumination, the light, right? Having your illumination properly uh, accounted for on your microscope uh, will allow for the most clarity, the most contrast uh, when you're viewing cells. And so there are step-by-step -step process on how to do that as well as a video for all of this. Uh, okay. But having that contrast between the image and the light source uh, will allow your cell to be as clear as possible or whatever you're looking at. And then it, we're not doing this in person, but uh, you'll watch a video uh, to actually there's images provided. Uh, the videos are really to how to how on how using the micro how to use the microscope, but the images are what you would see uh, as you look into the microscope. Uh, and there's some questions regarding a letter E because you'll notice different things about how the letter E uh, becomes inverted uh, when you look at it under the microscope. Um, so the image uh, inverts its orientation. Uh, and uh, just it's more for practice and uh, focusing practice all of these things. Um, but the main thing that I want to get to now uh, is how to use it, how to use the microscope in addition to all that. And when you're actually, when you actually have your slide with your specimen on it, you have a glass slide that you're going to place your sample on, whether it's cells or in this lab, it's onion, epidermis, uh, as well as I'm forgetting uh, the letter E slide. There's a slide with that printed out letter E. Um, so these are tiny glass slides um, that you place on what we call the stage. So here's your stage. And there's this little indentation here that you place the glass slide in so that you can view it and whatever's on your glass slide. Uh, so in this lab, ah, of course, onion and then the cheek cells. It's really cool to do that. Uh, so in the lab, and you'll see pictures of this, uh, it's kind of a bummer. Using microscopes is one of my favorite things. Uh, so one day you'll use one. <laughs> um, we get a toothpick and scrape off cheek cells from the inside of your mouth that are constantly sloughing off and then place that on a glass slide and view the cheek cells uh, in turn. So the, um, but the thing about cells that I will mention now, they are transparent, of course, right? They're water based. We learn water surround is the universal solvent it's everywhere in life and so you can't see your cells unless you stain them so there's a couple different chemical dyes uh that can stain these cells uh and to view um actually onions are actually they already have that natural pigmentation so you don't have to stain those but other cell types absolutely uh you'll you'll need to stain them with a dye uh okay so I did want to mention that because there's a question on that in the lab. Uh, but let me let me show you how. I wish I had a microscope, but basically, the process of how and why we I do this sort of thing with using a microscope. Uh, the first thing is well, once you get all your settings in place, right? Uh, that we just that we just talked about. You're going to get your sample, your slide, but you want to make sure, I'll show the picture. You want to make sure, and this is an indication of the student put the microscope away properly from the previous lab. Uh, 
but uh, you want that stage to be all the way down, all the way down. Uh, and you also, uh, so we have what we call objective lenses. There are these lenses that point down towards the specimen on the stage. So there's actually three objective lenses. Three objective lenses to choose from in the intro class, okay? There's, there's a 4X, so a four times objective lens. Uh, we sometimes call this scanning power. So this is scanning, the scanning objective lens, which I'll explain why in a moment when I talk about how we use the microscope. There's also, you rotate it, there's also another objective lens, 10x. This is your low power objective lens. And then you also have a high power objective lens, 40x. So again, these objective lenses are just lenses that point downward, kind of like this, and they can rotate. So you can choose between these uh, three powers. The amount of zoom you're getting on your specimen, the amount of magnification. So in a moment, we're going to talk about magnification. So as you look through your microscope, Interestingly enough, you're actually looking through another lens. It's called the ocular lens. They're in these eyepieces. So the ocular pieces here, these eyepieces are actually magnifying your specimen as well. There's lens uh, components in the oculars and it magnifies it by 10x. So you have a 10x ocular and magnification from your objective <coughs> lenses, okay? So you also have ocular lens, which is a 10x uh, magnification. Certain microscopes have different ocular magnifications, but pretty standard, pretty standard is 10x. Okay. So if you have a 10x ocular, and then you have objective lens, choice of three, right? You get actually a total magnification. And the total magnification of your specimen is the ocular magnification multiplied by the objective lens magnification. So the ocular lens times the objective lens. So what's my total magnification if I rotate my objective lens to my low power objective? Where'd my water go? Not 400, my low power, low power, <clears throat> the 10x objective lens. 100, absolutely. So what that means, okay, well, actually, before I say that, what's my total magnification if I'm on the high objective lens? High power. Then it's 400, yes. Okay. What that means, 400x, 
if I'm looking at a cell, okay, which is microscopic for this reason, you can't see it with the naked eye. If I'm looking at a cell and I'm under my high power objective lens, I am looking at it as if it were blown up 400 times its actual size. That's what it's going to appear like in my, uh, as I look at it. So they're very small. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about some other just procedural things about the microscope, how to use it uh, as we dive into parts of the microscope here, the objectives, the oculars, uh, stage everything so and then we can kind of go into how we do this how we look at something under the microscope so the key so if actually if we look at our, our microscope here Oh, yes, Glorianne, that's correct. So if you were at scanning power, the lowest power objective lens, you'd be, it would be four times 10, right? So 40X total magnification, yep. Okay, so here are the key things when I get into how we use this thing. The key things are these knobs we have stage control knobs or stage manipulator knobs here, which protrude downward underneath the stage here. So if you're looking into it, you kind of can uh, adjust these knobs. And what these knobs do is they move your slide left and right, up and down, back and forth, to and fro, uh, whether you're playing with the top one or the bottom here. And so you can move your sample around, your cells around. You can look at different cells in the uh, sample of cells. You can look at different structures by moving the glass slide around. It'll move this uh, piece of, that controls where the slide is on the stage. Uh, the other very important set of knobs here are the coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. And they're gonna play a role in how we begin to every time when you start using a microscope, you want to do something with these knobs. Um, the brightness adjustment. Actually, we'll get we'll get to the rest of that. Let's let's talk about these knobs and sort of uh, the importance of them when it comes to when you start using the microscope. Okay, let me get some water here. Okay. So every time you get your microscope, you want your stage all the way down. All the way down. Put your sample on it, on your stage. And then what you're gonna do is move your stage up. It's all the way down. How do you put your stage all the way down? How do you move the stage at all? It's this coarse focus knob, this big knob. That's the coarse adjustment knob. It's on the side and you rotate it. And when you do, the stage moves up and down. It brings your sample into focus so you can see it. You'll look under the microscope and you won't see anything uh, as the stage is all the, all the way down. And then as you bring it up very slowly, oh, wow, it appeared. There it is. And you can move it into focus. The most important thing here, you always start and use the course adjustment knob when you are at the scanning objective. So I'm actually just going to write <clears throat> Use course knob only. Use course objective. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, I am out of it. 
use coarse knob. Not only, I totally screwed that up, my bad. <clears throat> you wanna start with the coarse knob at 4X. Uh, use coarse knob. Uh, I totally screwed that up, sorry. I should have said start at 4X every time. You wanna start at your lowest power every time. That's the key. So all right. Start at scanning power. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really write that as coherently as I wanted, but if uh, the key here is that you start at 4x, you don't start with 10x or 40x, these larger, bigger objectives. The reason is when you start to rotate, you bring that stage up, you don't want it to hit the lens. And it's impossible to hit the 4x objective lens. It's too short. So you're gonna use that big knob to bring your sample into focus. Then, the coarse knob, you're, it's coarse. You're not gonna be able to get your sample all the way perfectly looking good with the coarse knob. You'll look at it and be like, oh, it's still kind of blurry. It's not perfect. Sometimes you can, but it's very rare. Usually there's a little fine tuning to do, and that's what the fine focus knob's for. So you'll start with that coarse adjustment knob, bring the stage with your sample up under the 4X objective, and once you put it into as good focus as you can with that knob, you can use this smaller knob on the side called the fine adjustment knob to sharpen it, fine tune that image and it becomes a little clearer. Okay? Okay. That's what I was trying to say. Then here's where I really want to emphasize using one knob only. Start at 4X only, you start only at 4X, right? And then you only, this is when, let me back up, when you wanna zoom in. 4X is scanning, it's a lower power, right? But when you wanna zoom in to your image, your specimen, and you rotate your objective lens after you get into focus, you don't wanna use the coarse knob anymore. That objective lens is gonna be right next to your sample, right up in it. And if you move that stage, you're gonna hit it and crack it like I did in grad school and got in trouble. These are expensive microscopes. You wanna be very careful. So I'm gonna write, use fine focus only at these powers. So use fine focus only exclamation point. So, uh, let me move this up, sorry. I actually haven't seen the night bear before Christmas. Don't get mad at me. I'll, uh, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll watch it for Halloween. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of like classic movies. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Why not? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I've watched a lot of more recent movies. It's timeless and great. Okay, I will check it out. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're using our fine focus only. That's the main thing. That's really it. And you won't have to use your coarse focus anymore because you put it in focus here enough that you'll only need the fine focus here. The microscopes are designed that way. So the, um, the last thing I want to mention before the end of this lecture uh, is why 
an additional why, and the reason is there's a question on this in your man, uh, packet, but the additional why that you started scanning, it's called scanning for a reason. And the analogy I like to use is a hawk surveying a canyon as it flies over, looking for prey, mice, right? These small mice. It's kind of like us at the microscope, looking for small cells. Your sample of cells is gonna be on a particular spot in, on your slide. It does, it's not the whole thing. You're not just immediately there. More importantly, it, let me just actually back. Okay, so essentially, if that hawk looking at mice in the canyon was flying very low to the ground looking for mice, is that very effective? Or if it's he's way up, he can see all the mice in the canyon very quickly. But if he's way down, he's looking at a patch of dirt and to survey that entire canyon and fly around, it's gonna take all day. So hawks fly very high over mountains and they have great eyesight and they're looking everywhere. They get a bigger vantage point. The same for us. If we started at a high, higher power objective lens uh, and we're way zoomed in, we might not even be looking at the sample. It might be somewhere else on the slide. And it'll take forever to find it. We might be looking at the sample in a place we don't want to be looking at. The easiest, quickest way to survey everything at once and find it and zoom in on it is by starting here and then progressing and zooming over time, getting more power. So the order is sort of like this. Oops. So the scanner, it's not scanner, scanning objective lens. Yeah, it shows, yeah, you can, you have a higher, you're low power, right? You're not very zoomed in at scanning. Uh, only 4x, 40x total. But yeah, so you can get, you can see all your cells. And then if you want to zoom into a particular cell, you kind of like the hawk, move with those knobs, move it over, and then you can rotate your objective lenses and go straight into it and zoom in at that part. Because as you zoom in, you get less field of view, we call it. If you are zoomed out, you get this large expansive field of view, right? Just like the hawk. Okay, it's about five o'clock. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, so questions about the lab, about the lab first, any lab questions? It's essentially you learning how to use a microscope and practice using it with cells, like cheek cells, onion cells, and seeing those cells, which you're not because you're at home. Kind of annoying. But uh, actually, uh, the department chair has done a really good job at uh, providing images and instructions. And so when you do finally use a microscope, you'll, it's pretty good preparation. For sure. What are the stains that they ask about in the pre-lab? Oh, it's it's when you view uh, these cells. You'll use a specific uh, dye. So, for instance, All right, well, it's really just the cheek cells in this lab. Uh, methylene blue. Uh, and it asks what they stain. The nuclei is more intensely stained for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The videos will explain. Oh, oh, I did forget about putting away the microscope. Yeah, it's a great question. I should have mentioned. So, like I said, you start at 4x, right? the lowest power with the stage all the way down. 
The, um, so that's how you want to end using the microscope too. You don't want to end on a higher power. You end at the lowest power. You lower your stage all the way. You wrap your cord around properly in the back. Um, those are the main things. And then you put away the microscope. Oh, and of course you remove the specimen, right? I've done that, I've, you know, people accidentally leave their glass slides on there, um, which is no bueno. You wanna put it back in the appropriate containers or places. I have a random question. Okay, for the spring we'd be continuing. I actually don't know yet. Uh, oh wait, what is the next bio class after this one? Um, uh, I actually don't know at Maricosta, the majors level. Um, yeah, it depends, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of different, there's a majors level, there's different avenues of biology and depend, and it also depends on your career path. Right. And for nursing, you're going to be taking other elective type courses. So like physiology, microbiology, uh, anatomy. Um, so it depends, it depends on your goals in life. Any more lab questions? Um, and then we can do any other questions, journal, anything. Nothing? Journal? For the journal, will be graded on, here we go, on academic language or the way the paper is written. Uh, it's more, uh, really the biggest thing is in your own words. Trying to make it sound fancy is no good. I want you to just show me that you understand it by using your own words. And if it's, you know, if it doesn't sound like as scientifically an English standpoint, I get what you're saying. So like as fancy, no, it's, it's, I wouldn't worry too much about that. The name of the reference page does not count as pages. I'm not really looking for page number, truly. Uh, I really am just focused on if you're following the form, the directions, one to two paragraphs per subtopic with the illustrations. I just give a rough estimate of how many pages it should be around five to eight, right? Something like that. References go on a single page at the very end, but sometimes it's built, you have more references that'll be two pages long, right? So one to two pages. It doesn't have to like all fit on a single page. Good questions. Anything else? No, no. Just where you feel you want to add an illustration, a figure. Um, each one doesn't need one because you only need three, three limit, uh, minimal. <laughs> 